So quick little thing first, when I selected this, I can go ahead and I can say, when I select the actual mode six, do I want to read all the mode six at once or do I want to read it continuously? And if this thing, if I could select specific, so either generic or if I could select, you know, general motors, since that's what this happens to be. So if I can click on this little drop down menu and I'm going to select GM. And the benefit for me doing that is, back in the day we would have these TIDs and CIDs numbers and it would all be in hexadecimal coding. But if I select this, General Motors, it's like the secret decoder ring. So now I don't really necessarily care that, you know, a TID dollar sign and 11 and a CID dollar sign whatever means whatever. It's going to tell me in, in real world explanations what this means. What's real important though is over here. Do I want to read all the mode six information one time or would I like to read it continuously? So I would, I always choose to read it continuously. Now, why would I want to choose to read it continuously? Because this goes back to an OBD2 thing. So we all know that we have a naval criteria and we have all this stuff that was built into a vehicle. And it, in order for it to mature certain trouble codes, it would need to see the fault twice. So when I explain mode six, I tell them, picture there's like a little guy inside or a little woman inside of a box, right? The box is a computer and this little, this little person has like a little, a little uh, clip, clipboard and he's taking notes on everything that he's seeing. Now, if he sees a problem, he knows, anybody that doesn't know what mode six is, basically it gives you the testing values so it tells you what the minimum testing value is and what the maximum test testing value is and what the current value happens to be. So that's the computer strategy, how it knows it has a problem. Obviously, it's, without, it's, it's outside that window of opportunity there. So that little guy inside the computer is taking notes of this and depending on the type of code you're gonna eventually set, he may have to see that problem occur twice. But if I go in there and I say, I want to read them all continuously. I don't necessarily have to meet all that enable criteria. So sometimes misfire, in order for it to set a misfire code, it's going to have to be misfiring, but it's going to require a key cycle before it's ever going to set that type of code. But it would still show up on mode six before that, because mode six is what, is what the root cause of setting the codes happen to be. So mode six is going to fail first, and then a code is going to be set. So I don't necessarily have to meet that enable criteria if I have it running continuously. And now this is color coded, so if there's not a color associated with it, it means that everything's okay with it. Um, if it's red, that means it's definitely failing. Now, the other thing to remember about mode six is not so much a problem on later model cars like we see, but in the early days of OBD2, Sometimes we'd have red stuff there that was indicating that it failed, but it's because the car didn't support it. So let's give an example, a heated catalyst monitor. If the car didn't have a heated cat on it, it's always going to say that it's failing, but the software engineers wrote the software for the, for the OBD2 computer to know this car didn't support it, so we're never going to set a trouble code based off of this. So if you see something red, first thing you'd have to do is read what it is and say, oh, well, that's because this car doesn't have it or you see something red, you're gonna say, okay, this is great. Now, what can I do with this mode six? Well, obviously I see if something's on the verge of failing, right? I can also verify my repair afterwards. So let's say I had a code, it failed mode six test. I know why it's failing, it's out of the range, it's telling me the testing range right there. So if I put part X on the vehicle, I should see it actually passing at this time. I also know that OBD2 told us if I set a trouble code, we didn't want to set false codes, so we would stop testing other stuff, right? That's fine and great. We put a new part on there. That code that we're trying to fix is now fixed, but the computer said I needed that oxygen sensor, let's say, to test a whole bunch of other components. Well, since I did, knew I had a bad O2 sensor, I'm going to start testing this other stuff. Well, now that I've actually replaced the O2 sensor, computer says, okay, good, let's go test this stuff again. Well, now the check engine light might set again.
because maybe something else failed. I can do that. I can couple that with my information system, look at the enable criteria, see what the whole test results are, know prior to the repair that this stuff hasn't been tested. So then I would go look at that information in mode six to see if it's actually passing or not. So when I call the customer and sell the job, I know that when I do that repair, whatever it happens to be, that check engine light's not gonna come back on for a whole different code. Because try, and I'm sure this has all happened to all of us at one time, try to explain to a customer, no, no, it's a different code. They're thinking, dude, I brought you the car because the check engine light was on and it's back on again. So I don't know what kind of line of crap you're trying to, trying to give me here.